Hello, and welcome to Mitchell Consulting's webinar series for our Mitchell University. Today, we're going to be working with in for fax and we're going to be talking about how to prepare checks in the fax system. This webinar is being recorded. It'll be available on our website, so you can visit us at www.mitchellgroup.com to view this, plus the others in our training series. Today, for purpose of the demo, we're going to be using fax 7.8 for our demo. So let's begin. Let's start from the main menu, and we're going to go into Accounts Payable. In the Accounts Payable, the check processing is done in two components. We have the payment and hold selection and the actual check writing. The payment and hold selection is broken into two parts as well. We have the payment selection, which we see here, and then we have the hold selection. What this allows us to do, the hold, which we'll discuss later today, um, the hold allows us to actually place an invoice on hold so it cannot be paid. This is for if we have, again, something in dispute. Um, we want to make sure nobody accidentally pays it so we can place it on hold. The other one here, we can do a payment selection by date so we can batch. We can do also an individual payment selection. We can see the payment selections that we've created, and then we can unselect what we want for payment. So this is a nice functionality. What a lot of our clients do is they start maybe with the payment selection by date, and they run this, and then they use the individual payment to go in and make any changes. Or you can go directly into the payment selection. We're going to go through both, um, and we're going to go through the process. So let's begin. So let's go to selection payment by date. And what this allows us to do is um, it gives us some information. Again, we can determine if we want to do it in vendor order, in alpha order, in vendor class. As we know from working with facts, if we select vendor order, this beginning ending will search my vendors. If I select vendor class, you see here we're searching our vendor classes. So you can see the vendor classes here. If we went to vendor itself, you can see we're searching the vendors and so on with the alpha search. We have document groups. We can define document groups uh, if we want. We can work here with the document groups. So if we want to have certain documents, like let's say certain payables put together, we can run it by group. We can choose our due or discount date. This is going to trigger the check date for the purposes of gathering information. We can do it by due date or discount. I'm going to start off with due date. Here, this the check date, this is confuses some people. It's not the actual date of the check. This is the date I want to check for this above here. So for example, I'm going to leave that blank and I'm going to select everything. And then I'm going to go through and we'll we'll select little by little. We could put a lead time right now by default, and this is set up in the file maintenance. The lead time is seven days. So what it's going to do is if I put a date here of say the 15th. It's going to allow lead time uh, seven days ahead. Again, this is nice. Sometimes people do this because they want to. Let's say you want to, you do payments every Friday, so it's, you know, Friday's the fifth. You know, but you may have you know, invoices that are due the next day on. They just fall due on a Saturday or Sunday, or maybe they're due Monday, Tuesday. So what I do is I like to always just put every Friday. It just makes it easy for me to get the date, and I just want to check, you know, five or six, seven days out. I can do a minimum. So what I can do is when I can check, I can put a minimum. So say, for example, I put $100 and I have an invoice that's less. It won't pick it up. I can, again, determine my branches if I'm set up for branches. So you can see here we're using branch one, which is the Atlanta branch. Again, we can select all branches if we want. The payment type. Again, when invoices are entered, um, right now everything in my demo is checks. So we can have checks, ACH, and wire transfers. We're just going to select all. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK. So what it's letting you know, it says you want to update the record. So we're going to say yes. And you can see that we updated 47 records were updated. So what I've done is I've just selected the entire aging to be paid. Let's look at uh, the payment selection list. So again, here we're just going to run it for everything because we ran it for everything. And we're going to look at everything that got selected. And then we'll go through and we'll do some individual ones. So you can see here, we selected everything. So you, and again, a purpose for the demo today, I'm going to focus on these two vendors. We're going to use vendor V100 and V101. 
So you can see here we have some information about this. We have a due date and a discount date. So in this case, we have some things that are due on 7.30. So we have a due date of 7.30. And then we have discount dates of, say, 7.10. So depending on how we run the report, we can get some different information. Again, I selected everything, so it did select everything here, as you can see. You can see it also updated in that individual payment selection. So if we go here and we select our first vendor, you can see that, again, everything was selected for payment. So let's clear this and now. Let's go ahead and we're going to clear it and we're going to go through it uh, with some different options. So I'm going to go to unselect payments, and here I'm going to take everything out. So you should see now I took 47 out, so we're back to zero. This is used sometimes because you may um, you may have selected um, because of the way your vendors are set up. Like you you may have selected did a range of vendors, but one of the vendors in the middle you do not want that vendor, so you can go and unselect it. So let's go to payment selection date again. Um, let's put in our one vendor. So we're going to look at V100. Okay, and we're going to select due date, and like I said, we're going to put in 07-30-12. Let's take the lead time off, and let's run this. Again, yes, we want to update the records. So you see now we picked four. Let's go into that criteria. If we go to the individual payment selection, you can see that all four of those been selected. So this first one got paid, which makes sense because we were doing it by due date. So we're only looking at the due date. So this is due 730. That one got picked up. This line here is due on 930, so it did not get paid. You can see here. This one here. Okay. And we can see here this one here, which was uh, due on 730. This one got paid. Again, this is another one that did not get paid, 828. Pick this one and this one and not that one. Right. So let's go do that again. Let's just go done. Let's go to our unselect payments. Let's just unselect everything. So now you're going to see that we're going to update with four. We're going to take those four off. And then we see them right there. So let's go back into the individual selection date again. Let's use our vendor V. 100, V100, and let's change this to um, discount date. I think we said 07, 10, 12 was our date, and let's take the lead time off. Let me just see that date. If we go ahead and run it, and see now we got three records. Again, we can go in here and look at those three records. And let's see, this one got picked up because, again, it falls within the discount date of 710. This one also falls in the date. These are in September. And this one falls in the date. So again, we have that information. Now, again, here we talked about you can do that, but you know what? Let's say whatever reasons, let's say this one, even though it doesn't fit in, I want to pay this one. So I could have just gone here and also paid that one. I can also delete from here. So again, we talked about if we ran the um, a range of vendors, and for whatever reason we didn't want this vendor, we can also deselect here. And you can see nothing was paid. OK, so let's do, uh, again, let's go back to the, the due date of 7.30. And let's do one, and we're going to add to it. So we're going to go here into the hold selection. We're going to go back into the payment selection by date. We're going to put in our vendor uh, V100. We're going to do due date, and we're going to put 07-30-12. So we're going to run that. And you can see, we again, we have the four records updated. Now what I'm going to do is I can also add to that, because every time I go in, I can actually keep adding. I don't have to erase. Now I have four in the system. If I go to my uh, payment selection list, and I run this, you will see that I have the four selected for that one vendor. 
So what I do now is I can run this, and then I can go back and let's say add some more. So again, here it is. Here's what's selected. You can see the form. But now I decide, well, you know, I really need to pay that vendor V101. So what I can do, if I do not erase this, I can go back to the individual selection by date, and I can now go in and put in V101. Let's just run R. I think it was two of those total. And when I say update the records, it's going to add these to the file. So I'm going to have vendor V100 with the, with the invoices that were I selected. Now I'm going to add vendor V101. So I'm going to go here, and you can see it added two more records. If I go to my payment selection list, and again, I'm just going to run it for everything, you'll see now the two vendors. So I can use this to build back and forth, and I can remove and so on. So as a general rule, what, we, what most people do is they use the, um, the date to get you know, kind of the, the main part, and then they go to the individual and make some changes. You don't have to use the payment selection by date. You can go directly to the uh, individual, and you can put your vendors in and just go through your vendors if you choose, or you can do it this way. Now, the difference between some of the things is you notice here, when I'm doing this, it's Again, assuming paying the invoice in full. And it's taking the discount amount if I pay within the discount dates. I don't really have ability to change it. If I want to change, like for example, let's say this one, we don't want to pay $100. We only want to pay $800. That I have to do in the individual selection. So again, I don't have to run this, but I can run this to get it going and go into the individual selection to make these changes. So let's look at these two in the individual selections now, vendor V. 100 under V101. I'm going to select my individual payment. And you can see how when I go through, again, I got my branch. Again, I can choose my branches or all branches. I have my cutoff date. And again, I'm just using, uh, this is the uh, date that my demo is set on, but again, I can actually change this date. And again, I'm going to start with my first vendor. So you can see here the four we selected. So now what I want to do is I want to highlight this line, and I want to edit this line. I can double click that way, or I can use the uh, edit button up here. You know what? The pay amount, I don't want it to be 1,000. I want to pay 800. It's just going to tell me it doesn't match the invoice. That's OK. I'm just going to tap through it because that's what I want. And again, it's going to tell me that information. It's just warning me because I'm paying short. So here what you can do is I'm making a payment of that amount. Let's say this one here. Again, I can either double click or highlight here. And I can say I want to pay 200 for this one. Again, same thing. It's just going to give me a warning. You can see I'm paying 200 And let's say this one here, we don't want to pay at all. Now, when I do this and I, and I selected the delete here, what it's doing, it's not deleting the invoice from the agent. A lot of people get confused. They think, well, I don't want to delete that. I, want to pay. I just don't want to pay it now. No, what this delete means is deleting the payment here. So you can see it's flagged for payment. If I click Delete, delete this payment. I'm not deleting the invoice document 361. I'm just deleting the payment. What I'm doing, I'm going to get rid of this payment part. Can you see here? That does confuse people because they get confused and they say, well, I don't want to delete this invoice because I need to pay it later on. So the delete there doesn't actually delete the invoice. It does that. You can also use a delete all up here, again, which will just take everything out because if I go here, let's say now I go to my next vendor, if I didn't want to pay anything of these, I can just say delete all, and they'll all go away. Or I can say, you know what, I want it. I can pay all, or I can say I just want to pay this one here by doing pay. Right? So again, a lot of flexibility in the system. You can do it that way. So again, here I can go in. I can say done. So now if we look and we go to our report, we may want to print this afterwards, so let's see what we've got, because we ran it originally 
by date, and then we tweaked it and made some changes to it. So what you see here in the report is what the check is actually going to be written for. So it's nice that you can actually have the ability of going into here. So again, see, you can see here that we're paying this one 800. This was most of a credit, so we have five and we need two. So this is going to be this one right here, and then this one here, we decided to pay that one. Remember, there was two there, we paid one. So again, the payment selection list is kind of nice to run before you do checks. This is going to tell you what is going to uh, it's going to happen. But in this case, we're going to have to we're going to pay a total of a thousand seventeen twenty seven. This is good to make sure you have the money in the bank. So a lot of people do is you can have say maybe somebody set this up and run it all and then just print the report, review the report. If everything's okay, you can go to the next function, which is the actual print checks. Otherwise, you can go back and make your changes. Now, the whole one, let's do, um, let's go here and let's actually, let's go back to our individual selection. So we're going to go through here. Let's go now to this vendor. So now we have this vendor 102. And you can see that this transaction has a Y next to it. Okay, I put that transaction on hold. There's a dispute with the vendor. Something's going on for whatever reason. I don't want that invoice to be paid. I don't want someone to accidentally select it for payment. If you'll notice because there's a Y, you'll see that the pay is grayed out. If I select this line, you can see I can pay it by hitting that. But again, this one here is grayed out. So that's on hold. So what I did is I actually put that invoice on hold. So I don't want to do it. If I want to take it off hold, I can take it off hold for payment. So let's go here into the second part of the payment and hold selection, which is here, the hold selection and the hold list. Again, we can run a list of everything on hold. So this way we can see what we put on hold. And again, this will allow us to see the ones that we want to make a change to it. We can actually go and we can change it. So you can see the vendor V102 is on hold. Okay, and there's a reason, allowance for defect. Here's a dispute, an apparent overcharge. So again, I have these three on hold. I can do the same thing. I can remove these from hold. I can put these on hold. I can do that in the hold selection. So again, here I'm going to I'm going to put in my vendor, and you can see here by the way, see where it says 101, where it says the payment, a payment in a file. That means because we've selected this for payment, so technically I can't put this on hold right now, because you can see how it gets kind of grayed out because I've already selected it in the selection. So obviously I can't put it on hold. I have to go through my check run to go through it. But if you see here on, on this vendor, you can see that this one is on hold. So if I want to do the same thing, I want to say, you know what? I have a problem with uh, this one right here. I can toggle the hold. So if I click this, again, and it's going to ask me for a memo. Uh, I'm just going to put... Uh, my demo. You can see now it has a yes. If I highlight it and toggle again, it'll take it off. So I can toggle, turn it on. I don't have to write a memo, but it's nice to write a memo uh, if I want to know what's going on or somebody else to see it. So that's how you do that. Now those two are on hold. We're just going to click done. So now if we go to the um, payment selection or the holds list, let's go to the individual payment selection. We'll see now both of those. So let's just, here's an event. So you can see that these two are on hold. And again, when it's on hold, you can see the pay button is grayed out. So again, um, things to remember, when you put things on hold, when they're on hold, they cannot be paid, they cannot be selected for payment or paid until they're released from the hold. So as long as you're on hold, you can't make any payments. If you want to pay, you have to go into that hold selection with the toggle, and you have to take it off hold.
Once it's off hold, then you can pay it. Another thing to remember is the concept of when you're in here, the concept of the deleting. Okay, you're not deleting the uh, actual invoice itself. You're just deleting the payment record on it. Okay, so that's how we actually do our selection. Pretty simple. So again, to recap what we've done, we're in the payment hold selection here. And what we've done is we have the first one, which we can do the selection by a date. Again, this is kind of a batch way of doing it. So if I go in here and I run this, I can choose my vendors, my document groups. I can do it either by a due date or a discount. The check date is kind of the cutoff date. They call it check date. Again, that kind of confuses people because they think it's a date of the check. In this term, check means checking the discount date or checking the due date, not the actual physical check. Um, sometimes we change that for people too because it gets confusing. That's just going to be the date I'm going to check. So if I want to do it by due date, and I put a date of, again, July 30th, that's, I'm checking the due date of July 30th. The check date, the date on the actual check itself, is not going to be July 30th. That's going to be whatever you want to post the check to, because you can prepare this ahead of time. The lead time, and again, this is a default coming from the file maintenance, when it's in the static control, um, that's just a lead time. Some people like to put a lead time because, again, typically I cut checks maybe every Friday or every other Friday, if something's, I want to just give myself the cushion of putting, you know, today's date, again, by looking at the calendar, it's just easier for me to look at a calendar and go in and select it and then go say, well, you know, give me anything if two or three days ahead of time. So then what happens is if something's due, like, on the 1st and it's a Saturday, it gets picked up. You can put a minimum amount in here. And, again, you can notice that you have all the information at the bottom. You want to see it. You can select your branches. Again, I'm just dealing with branch one right here, but you can do multiple branches. And you can select the payment type. Okay, and then when you run that, it'll actually generate a file. You can see that file in the payment selection list, but you can also go to the individual payments. And in here, you can do this one. Again, the two work together, but they're not required to be run together. You don't have to go to the payment by date first you can just come here and select them. Again, personal preference, some people like to come here because they use this function here and they just say, they see um, this vendor uh, and they say, oh, okay, uh, I want to pay all. And they click pay all, they click the next vendor, oh, I want to pay this one, and you know, they click pay, pay, and whatever they want to do and so on. And they're just kind of scrolling through the vendors. Again, you can use the function key F1 and so on if you want to do that. Again, and you have your options. You can pay it. You can pay all. We'll pay everything that the vendor has. So if we go to our, again, here you can see the V100. What, if we click pay all, we're going to select everything for payment in the list. You can do it that way. And you can also, again, and this screen is used when you want to do a partial pay or make an adjustment. So for example, if I want to pay this item, in this case I'm only paying 800, I would have to use this screen. The payment by date is going to assume payment in full. It's going to take the discounts uh, based on the date of the discount and so on. But you can override the information in here. All right. So that's the individual payment selection. And again, you're just going through and you're checking the ones you want. And then we have our, here we can unselect, we can actually here we can do our payment list. So everything that we've selected in that individual selection and or the selection by date is going to be in here. So this is kind of our little edit report. We may want to run this and we want to say, okay, this is what we're going to pay. So we're going to pay, again, these two things here. We're going to pay a total of 1000 We have enough money in the bank. Great. We're going to make a payment. If you want to actually clear something, you can actually go into the uh, unselect. You can, un again, unselect by a vendor. Or if you click OK, it's going to unselect the entire file. So if you want to just unselect everything and start again, you can do it that way. The other two are dealing with putting invoices on hold. 
Again, when an invoice is on hold, we cannot select it for payment and we cannot pay it. If an item is in dispute, we can go into the hold selection and again, we can enter an item. So we have it, I think, right here on B102. You can see that this one's on hold as well as this one. Again, you would come in here to put things on hold. You would just use the toggle. So if you toggle, this one's on hold. This will be. This will actually go off hold. If you toggle again, it will go on hold, and so on. And again, if you do that, you can also again use a list because I may want to see what's on hold at any given time. I can go here and I can run my hold list. Again, I can do it by vendor and whatever sorting criteria I want, or I can just click OK and I want to see everything. And we'll see how many things we have on hold. I think we put three on hold, right? Let's see what comes up. And again, we have these four. We have these two from this vendor, and this one, and this one. Okay, so that is today's the uh, the payment hold selection. Once this is done, we're ready, and then we can uh, we're actually gonna have another webinar on the check processing. So um, here is how we do it. Again, in in four facts accounts payable, we use this to select. Again, we can select by a date range. We can individual, and once we prepare all this, we can then print our checks. Okay, so that concludes our webinar for today. Um, like we said, this webinar is being recorded. It'll be available on our website. You can visit us at www.mitchellgroup.com to view this plus the others in our training series. And we thank you for your time.